Um, hey everybody, Chris here with... Julie. So we're going to talk about momentum today and collisions uh, and what happens when things collide, stuff like that. So thanks again for being here. So you're heading no off problem. to... Where are you heading off in a few weeks? Ohio University to work on my master's in teaching. There you go. Um, so she also works on the immune system tower defense game. So there's another fun video with, with her in it. Um, and the shirt is mostly working it's out. It's mostly, it's time. better. I don't know why Pikachu is see-through. That one's weird. It should be the green ones, but it's better. Yeah, so anyway. Um, so we should talk about the different types of collisions, right? Because that's right. kind of the first thing to, to go through. Right. When you're talking about collisions. Um, and so the this page that you're looking at, there's going to be a link at the in the description of this video. I'm going to go ahead and refresh it so we can see these collisions popping up. All right, so you see these three different balls coming in to collide, and one of them collides and bounces pretty hard. This one, you notice, is not moving quite as fast. And then these, these ones, these stick together. Um, now the first one, this kind of collision is called elastic. And the idea is that, that's right. So the, the idea is that the initial kinetic energy so in other words, if you add these two kinetic energies together, so this thing here is the initial kinetic energies added together, that equals the final kinetic energies added together. Uh, and when that is true, then when you bounce, you don't lose energy because there's no energy loss here. All the kinetic energy you had at the beginning, uh, you still have after the bounce, right? And then this line here, this has to do with momentum conservation. This line. Uh, you know, momentum is always conserved in all three of these collisions, and so the, this line, this equation, uh, represents that. Uh, the next one down here, uh, you want to talk about that one, Julie? Yeah, so in elastic collisions, so you can see there's, it's not quite as fast because it lost energy, maybe to heat or sound, and so the, the sum of the initial kinetic energies is more than it is at the end. That's right. So there's a, a greater than sign, symbol yeah. here instead of equality. So the the initial kinetic energies are greater than the final kinetic energy, the sum of the final kinetic energies. So we're losing some amount of energy, and you know why might we we be losing kinetic energy through the collision? So like heat loss, or maybe like it made a sound when it collided. Right. So when things bounce, you can typically hear them bounce, um, especially if like billiard balls, they make a big crack when they bounce. Um, but rubber balls too, you know? Um, so this is inelastic collision. And then the last one, you want to talk about that one too? So it was the perfect one, right? Yeah, perfectly inelastic collisions. So two objects collide and then they stick together afterwards. So they're both going to have the same final velocity, which makes the math a little bit easier. Yeah, so which you can kind of see here. So if, if V1F is equal to V2F, then you just say, well, it's just VF and you can factor out the sum of masses there. Um, it also turns out in this case that if you add up the initial kinetic energies, you add those up, they will turn out to be larger than the final kinetic energy. So you're losing energy as you, as you stick together. Now the coding activity today is actually focuses on this one because the math for this one is a bit simpler than the math for the other two. So it's a good place to start. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the ship from the Planetoids game. So if you, if you look on the YouTube channel, you can find the Planetoids video. And we're going to take uh, that code, and we're going to add a blob to it, and we're going to fly the ship into a blob. So instead of like the ship crashing into an asteroid, it's going to fly, it's going to fly into you know, a gigantic blob of jello. And just stay there. Exactly. And they're going to move together. Uh, but we have to make sure that that collision happens uh, in the right way. And by the right way, we mean we have to make sure that it conserves momentum there. Okay? So, uh, so Julie, do you want to go ahead and open up the Planetoids code? We have wireless microphones now. Look at this. We're not Whoa. tripping over each other. Wireless mic. I couldn't do that before. Look at this. We can have that ballerina demonstration that we've been talking about all along. Um, um, okay. So Okay, so that one? Yeah, and so the link gotcha. to this is, is going to be at the bottom of the screen for you guys out there. Um, first thing oh, you want to okay. do is you probably want to uh, click that button to make the console oh, this thing. disappear the console there. 
Gotcha. Um, so here's here's the code. So you can go ahead and hit play and see what it does. Uh, but it should look familiar from the Planet Toys game. So go ahead and. Okay, so I can turn, and then I can move forward. Yeah. So initially, you can only move forward. So the you can't actually fly in two dimensions yet. So we'll, yeah. we'll go and we'll, we'll we'll put that in there again. Uh, but what you can see is that we're showing what is the velocity of the rocket, and in a minute. We're going to put in a blob, in other words, a big circle. Show and the of the we're going to show the velocity of that blob gotcha. when we do that. Um, OK, yeah, you can see that in the front of it. So there's some new variables here. So if, if you compare this to the Planetoids game, we didn't have these variables before. Uh, these variables are for the blob. So the code is a little bit longer than the Planetoids game, but not, not too bad. Uh, and then we're updating the velocity, we're updating the location, uh, and then we're checking the arrow keys to see what's going on. So the first thing is just to add a blob to the game. And so if you go back to the tab, uh, there's a button you can click. I'm going to move over here so you can see it. Draw the blob. OK, yeah. So right after the display function, just add this code. Mm -hmm. So let's see. OK, so there's the display function. So there it okay, is. Okay, yeah, there we go. So we have a blob. Blob. Now the blob. The yeah, we don't collide with it yet because we didn't tell it to do right. that. Right. So if you want to set VX blob equal to 20, just see what happens. Um, okay, so it's 20 now, so we see a velocity vector there, the red velocity vector for the blob, but it's not actually moving. And so we're missing something in the code to make it move. That's so kind of the first thing. Probably similar to what we did for the rocket, right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so the thing about the blob is that it's only going to move at a constant velocity. We're not actually going to accelerate it necessarily like like we accelerate the rocket. So we really don't need an update velocity section for the blob. We only need Right, cuz we're not accelerating. Velocity. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So then it is what's it called? X blob, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have the plus equals now. Oh, it's so beautiful. So, what's it called? Velocity? V, VX blob. Mm -hmm. Yep, so VX blob is right there. Oh, it times dt. That's right. Yep, so, so the change in the distance is equal to the velocity times the time interval. So, the dt is important there. So, there okay, we go. So, so now, now it's going. So now it's moving along, um, which is cool. But it's not colliding, right? Right. It just goes straight through the ship. 